Okay, so that should be on. Yeah. Okay, so thank you, thank you. Um, oh yes. Okay, so karma and how to stop re re experiencing recurring patterns. Yeah. I just wanted today to just talk a little bit in, in um, just a little bit about karma in general and then answer that question, which is two parts. One is like, I just wanted to share some stuff uh, which I learned from one of my teachers, Dr. David R. Hawkins, uh, and doing his work on karma. It's like, I mean, it's not 100% true, but a lot of what happens is karmic in life. And, uh, you know, he said that with muscle testing and research, you know, it's not uncommon in a group, you know, studying A Course in Miracles or Enlightenment or something like that. You know, an average amount of lifetimes for people doing that type of work would be something like 15 lifetimes, you know, 15, 20 lifetimes, not un uncommon. And also to realize that, you know, society today is quite civilized, you know, to be born in this day and age, we're quite, you know, but in other previous lifetimes, you know, the, the world was very barbaric, you know, it was quite, you know, it was quite a savage, savage world. So if you're going back like 15 lifetimes, you know, it's like the, everyone was being savage to everyone, you know, there wasn't, you know, so it was quite aggressive. So. Uh, you can go back and you can have lifetimes where uh, it seems like you couldn't imagine yourself doing it to anyone else in this lifetime, but you know, I was probably like a thug, you know, bashing people with my sort of, what did they call them? I think they call them, anyway, big stick club, that's it. <laughs> that's probably like a caveman with a club, you know. And if you had got, if you just found a rabbit, I'd probably hit you on the head and steal your rabbit, you know. So. So, um, so, uh, so real sort of savagery and also the wars as well. Uh, you can be, when you, I mean, you know, uh, some of you, I mean, you know, like it's quite interesting. So there's this book, uh, but I won't say the name of the author, but there's a famous book with, uh, with all, you know, going back with past life research, seeing in this lifetime and then going back to the past lifetime. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you can be, you know, like the people in your lifetime now, like, Oh, the, you know, they might, you know, this person that you, you see every day, it could be your mother in the last lifetime, you know, and then this person, you could have been their lover in the last lifetime, you know, I could be a male or a female in the, in the, in the last lifetime. So, you know, it's like these laws of karma, it's like, you know, the thing like, you know, I could have, you know, like I could have been, um, and so you get back the lessons you need, like each lifetime will have certain lessons and you're sort of get an opportunity to transcend certain lessons from your, like your karmic history from the last 15 life, you know, like you were reincarnated in this lifetime. You know, like uh, if I, you know, I was probably a, a very, con you know, I could have been a very controlling parent in the last lifetime and then get a very controlling parent in this lifetime, which is perfect. You know, if I'm a really controlling, bossy parent, critical parent in the last lifetime, then it's a perfect opportunity for, for forgiveness then to have, you know, a bossy, critical, domineering, because it wouldn't, you know, that's like the unresolved karma for me to trans... You know, karma is like programs. I sort of see it like programs or belief systems, which, uh, which I take on board. You know, like when I'm identified as a separate being, then I, I sort of have a separated sense of others in relationship to myself. So, like, uh, I'm, you know, my history is like in this lifetime. I was, I had food addiction, you know. I, I, I had, uh, I had food addiction, which would mean that I was very, very greedy for food, you know. And uh, so it's like, you know, if there was, uh, if there was a plate, you know, if there was like, I don't know, nine people sitting, and there was somebody brought in nine donuts. If I could get away with two or three donuts. I, and I could manipulate the situation to get away, to do that, I would. Because you know? I wanted as many donuts, I couldn't think. I had no, I had a self-centered, it was just me. I couldn't really have any sense of others and my effects on other people. So, thank you. So, that's the thing. But then if I, if I act selfishly and I act with belief systems of lack and separation and these reinforce these beliefs, I'm not, I don't transcend these beliefs, and so the universe brings in these karmic opportunities, shall we say, in, in that lifetime or our next lifetime, 
uh, to choose and transcend, either through forgiveness or making a different choice or a higher choice. Because, you know, as we do the spiritual work, we dissolve the sense of the separated self. And so one gets a consciousness of oneness or connection with others. And so one doesn't operate it from a separated self. You know, so, so then, uh, so those belief systems, like, you know, the more I hold these beliefs, the ego is comprised up, let's say, of all my belief systems. And the beliefs come up through my actions. And my actions are a reflection of how, self, how separated is my state. You know, so when I'm feeling very, very separated, my actions can be very, very selfish or narcissistic. Or it's just about me, I don't care about you at all. I just want me, my stuff. Uh, and I, so when, it, when, we get, when the ego gets too inflated with too many belief systems based on a limited sense of self, we, we call that person selfish, self-centered, uh, and they have a lot of belief systems. But then the universe gives opportunities. You know, like if I've, uh, let's say, I came to someone's flat and I stole their biscuits when I went to the toilet, you know, and I thought I got away with it, you know, and they go, oh, I don't know what happened to your biscuits, it must have got lost somewhere, you know. <laughs> so, you know, if someone asks, you know, but it's, it's, uh, secretly I have a limited sense of belief, you know, like I got away with it, you know, I've got her biscuits and she doesn't know, I pretend that I didn't eat them. So, but then, you know, I get, then I have some biscuits in my house and, you know, someone comes over and then my biscuits go missing, you know, and then comes the thing of, well, this is unfair, you know, how could my biscuits go missing? And the universe is treating me badly. You know, this is unfounded. Or if I, you know, and I, I shared this true story. Uh, like, uh, I started my spiritual journey after I got kidney failure and I had a sort of a near-death spiritual experience. And then uh, I, I started going to spiritual groups and I'd buy these expensive hats and scarves. And I'd lose my expensive hats and scarves when I'd go to spiritual groups. I'd just go in there. It would be mystical. I'd go to a Course in Miracles group, and I'd buy, I just bought a new hunter's hat from Harrods on the sale. You know, it's this really wonderful thing. And then at the end, I'd walk out, and it wouldn't be there, and I'd go back, and they, it had just disappeared. <laughs> it had, had, had disappeared in thin air. Like it would just, it would just vanish. It would, it would vanish in thin air and you know I'd buy I could do the Harrod sales and I'd buy this beautiful woolly, woolly hat and I'd go to a 12 step group and then it would vanish at the end of the meeting you know so I'd have all of this stuff and then I go well these these are recurring situations which are very very similar and Hawkins said like you can you can like it doesn't take much imagination to know what you probably did to others you know it's probably like a like a, a temple thief you know, probably a temple thief in a past lifetime. So I'd probably be going to the local temple, and then everyone would be going in to pray, and then I'd sneak around the back and steal everyone's, like, <laughs> shoes and hats and scarves. <laughs> that was probably my living, <laughs> you know, pretending to be holy, <clears throat> and yet stealing your scarves and hats. So I started losing all of this. So, so one of the things that Hawkins said is you can probably intuit, like, it things keep happening to you over and over again, you can probably intuit what you've done. Maybe not in this lifetime. Sometimes I can see things from this lifetime. Like in this, um, in this lifetime, I worked um, in the stock market. I was quite manipulative and dishonest. You know, it's quite funny, actually. I was quite manipulative. I was a salesperson as well. Very manipulative, very dishonest, lots of sales tricks. And then, you know, I, start, I started my spiritual journey, like, try and be honest and, and, and do good, bless you. And, um, and then, you know, I remember once going on a, phoning up about an investment, and then I think they gave my number to everyone. And I was getting all these, like, people phoning me, these aggressive salespeople, phoning me up, and I said, like, you know, I put the phone down on them, and, like, they, they wouldn't, you can't get them off the phone. And that was me. You know, I'd get these like super, super aggressive, pushy salespeople. And I suddenly got on a list where they put my number out to everyone. I was just getting phone calls from a group. You know, so it's like, and, and Hawkins gave this prayer. I call it the anti karma prayer. Um, so, you know, I pray for forgiveness for the one in me who, in this lifetime and past lifetimes, has stolen other people's stuff. You see? So, so I don't really see that. Um, you know, if there's a recurring incident, I, I never see it as it's unfair. And that actually is helpful to me. Um, 
Hawkins like really made this funny joke. Right? It just made me laugh. He said like, uh, you know, if you get married and then your wife has an affair and leaves with the car, the Mercedes, just sort of say, well, that pays that karma off. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Because, you know, okay, your wife's cheated on you and taken away the Mercedes and left you alone. And you go, oh, well, you can have a good laugh. Well, I, I must have paid that one off from that last lifetime, so that I'm free of that karma load. You know, and have a, have a giggle and go, well, I've paid that one off now. So, so you know, so it's like, okay, so, and, and I got what he's saying. Like, these are things like, these are karmic debts, you know, and they unfold. But then after you've released them, you become lighter. You know, you, be, you know this thing that's pulling you down, you, you release a chunk of something. Uh, so it's like when these situations would seem unfair, like, I don't see situations as being ever unfair. Like, the universe is absolutely perfect. Um, I mean, there, there are so many karmic laws and they're very complicated. Uh, so you can't see, always see the big picture unless you have muscle testing, kinesiology, or you do past life regression. But if you do, like, uh, I think Hawkins mentioned, you know, like, often, I mean, it's well known. It's like sometimes when you have um, uh, the fear of water, you know, like, so you regress someone and they were drowned in a past lifetime, you see. Mm -hmm. So they just know, oh, I don't know why. In this lifetime, I was afraid of water. And then you regress them and you go, oh, okay. They were, you know, they could have been on the Titanic and they went down in the water. And in this lifetime, they've got a phobia. They need to overcome that. So when this patterns, like doing the anti-karma prayer, another way uh, to delete karmic patterns is that you can do the anti-karma prayer if, like, if everybody steals my... If, if I'm losing my biscuits or people are picking my pockets every time I go out on the street, it's like my wallet's gone. Well, you know, I'm probably a pickpocket, you know. I probably was a pickpocket in France, you know, just, you know, I was a professional pickpocket, you know. So it's like, that's why it happens all, 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 all the time over and over. So pray for forgiveness for the one in me who in this lifetime and past and you're starting to clear. And you're starting to get, you're starting to go into a place of compassion like, okay, well, this person, this person has stolen my biscuits. I'm going to hold on to this as, an, as a grievance for the rest of my life and never forgive them for stealing my biscuits. But if you, if you hold on to a belief, it stays in, you see. So the thing with, uh, so one thing is to, the, the anti karma the other thing is cancelling of beliefs, which we do in this group. You know, look, if I see something in the world... Uh, here's the thing, you know, one of the first lessons in the Course in Miracles is that all my thoughts are meaningless, okay? All my thoughts are meaningless. Okay, so, here's the thing. If I've got a karmic pattern, if I notice something in the world, like, oh, someone's stolen my hat, or someone's rude to me on the tube, it means that in my ego, that is a meaningful event, okay? It's a special event. It has, it's a, it's an, it's an event which has value. It's something which has significance to the ego. So that means that there is a belief, there are belief systems associated with why that event was registered. And if you remember, you know, like as you get to the realms of enlightenment, only being in the present moment, having no history of the last moment, as, as you delete more and more of the ego, there's just the now. Yeah? There's just now. And what happened two seconds ago is gone. Yeah, that was two seconds ago. Why are you holding on? So why do you hold on to events from two seconds ago or a week ago or a month ago? It's because the ego is holding it with meaning. You know, like, does anybody remember what color wallpaper was being used in the third flat they visited last week? Nobody remembers because it's meaningless. We don't remember and it's not held as a significant event if something is meaningful. If something is like, well, people are rude to me all the time, then it's a meaningful event, so it can be cancelled. You cancel whatever it is in the event that keeps recurring that has meaning to you. When the belief system of meaning is deleted, i.e. I cancel my belief, I cancel my belief that people can be rude to me. I'm an infinite being. Now, you might have to chunk it down like making funny facial expressions or funny tones of voice or because actually there is no such thing 
Um, there is nothing outside of oneself that, can dis that has power over you. It's only when you've got an ego and it's ascribed meaning that it can be registered and kept and then repeated over and over again. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So, you know, like, if, if like people's facial expressions and the words they use to me, or if they bump into me in the tube, if I render that meaningless, then I can't even remember that it happened. Because, you know, I'm not, I'm not picking up people's, I'm not looking to pick up, in my ego, it's not important what your facial expression is towards me. If your facial expressions are not important to me, and I cancel my belief that everyone's facial expressions are, n are unimportant, uh, I'm an infinite being subject, I keep doing that. Actually, it does work. I'll find that, oh, you know, I, I have a really bad day every time I go to this place because this person makes a funny facial expression at me. You keep cancelling it, they'll ke you'll start to find that you get less and less triggered by them making that facial expression, or even using this sequence of words. It's just a ut utterances. You know, certain, some, you know, no word is different to another word. If someone says, like, you know, I like your hair, it should be no different to, I want to kill you. You know, they're just like, just, just words. If you make those words meaningless, they can't affect you. And it's, it's very, very simple. But when you get triggered, or if, but also, those belief systems are the thing that make events come back over and over again. And they're related to karmic events in the past. You know, so when you got like, um, <clears throat> if I was stealing people's hats, um, if I was stealing, okay, let's say, well, this actually happened to me, like, you know, I would lose my hats and scarves, expensive hats and scarves. So, and I would get upset. Oh my God, I've just gone to, you know, to Selfridges and bought this hat and it was lost. But actually, that's only because it was meaningful for me, you see. Like, losing expensive hats was meaningful to my ego. You know, I had made it into a special thing. So if I cancel my belief uh, that my hat is important or meaningful, I'm an infinite being subject only to what I hold in mind. Cancel my belief money is important. I'm an infinite being subject only to what I hold in mind. I cancel my belief that people admiring my hat is important. I'm an infinite being. If I just wipe all of that as being meaningful, and then what happens is, it, it, if you lose, if I lose another hat, I don't register. It's like I stay in the present moment. It's not registered as a significant event. So I can delete, and also it's deleting my karma. Also, when I, I'll also be paying off my karma by making it meaningless. Because, you know, obviously when I stole people's hats and scarves, it was meaningful to me, and so I did it to get something. But as I make it meaningless, I delete it. And then I'm relying on the source to be my provider, not on me taking or having nice hats, which are all based on a limited sense of self. So on the, so those are like some of the laws. Of, now, also, I mean, uh, the thing as well, Hawkins described illness. When you start to do spiritual work, uh, all, you, you accelerate deleting your programs and things happen to you. So don't become disheartened if you suddenly do a lot of spiritual work. And it's like lots of people are horrible to you and you're getting illnesses all the time. That's because you're deleting lots and lots of karma very rapidly. And you're just, you're just going through. But um, Hawkins, very, very quickly, Hawkins described, uh, it's like in this lifetime, in order to release karma from a past lifetime, it's like the universe uses whatever is needed. Now, if you do like something like A Course in Miracles, you can start paying off your karma before it manifests. That's why it's good to start deleting these programs. Because if you don't delete these programs, like I'd say a course is trying to get you into the realm of the formless. You know, like, you know, if everything in your life was meaningless, if you've made all the hats, your money, uh, all the people you've made special in your life meaning, meaningless, this might bring up fear to, you know, to have no more special relationships, to, have, to let go of your meaning of money being, uh, being special to let go of people's words to you being special. But if you made everything meaningless, your ego would delete, and you'd delete all your karma, and you'd be in the eternal now. You'd be in the holy instant in every moment. So you'll also have deleted your karma, because karma can, things can only manifest for you if they have special significance. So that's one way of deleting uh, karma, is to see, like, why, what, what am I angry about? People are stealing my biscuits, I'm losing my scarves. Or, 
Like in relationships, if you're in romantic relationships and people always cheat on you, you know, then it's like, well, I pray for forgiveness for the one me who's always cheated on others in relationships. Or if, if my parent is always like being critical of, of me, well, I pray for forgiveness for the one in me in this lifetime and past lifetimes has been a critical parent. And as soon as I forgive that thing which I make me meaningful, like, oh, my mother's critical and meaningful, I found, like, I'll, um, I often share about this in the group, like, I had a very difficult relationship with my mother, and I, my thing was to transcend her, to make her totally meaningless, and to make her, 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 uh, her voice, her vocal tone meaningless, her facial expressions meaningless, the projection of the word mother to make it meaningless, to let go of all my outcomes and expectations of her, to render them all meaningless. It took five years of work, so it wasn't like one day or something, but... Uh, and then the relationship transformed, you know, and we had a beautiful, loving relationship until she passed away. So it's like, so it's also this thing, and Dr. Um, if I can just quickly put in, I'm sorry I'm rambling a bit, but I always love the thing of Dr. Hugh Len, you know, and this thing of the power of, like, not so much focusing on changing others, but letting go of my perceptions of what I see is wrong in the world, as opposed to forcing other people to look, you know, you're eating too many biscuits, next time you come, don't eat so many biscuits, rather than, look, you know, try and control the person to eat less biscuits, rather clear my perceptions in myself that I'm getting triggered that this person's eating too many biscuits on the table. And Dr. Hugh Len, such a famous example, and for anyone who's students who's, of course, a miracle student, you know, a whole prison in Hawaii of violent criminals, and he got their files, he didn't go and meet them, and he just transcended the data, forgave them for all their crimes. This is an axe murderer, this guy likes running over kids. And he just forgave them, because we're all connected in a, in a place of oneness. So he forgave them until, they, until he, that data of unforgiveness was released in him. And everyone got well in that prison and had to close the prison down, because everyone got well. So as opposed to going in there saying, aren't you guys really, really bad? You know, instead he just forgave them and he's a, he transcended the data. And then, miraculously, they all got well and left, and they closed down the prison. So this is the thing, and this is what I found with my mother. Rather than tell her, like, can you not say that to me, or do you mind uh, treating me more nicely, or telling me how good I am, rather than telling her to change, I let go of the data. I cancel my belief that my mother's facial expression is important. I'm an infant. I cancel my belief that my, that my mother's words have, have an effect on me. I'm an infinite being subject only to what I hold in mind. I cancel all my outcomes and expectations uh, that I have of my mother. I'm an infinite being. Um, I also did other tools, like being in the observer. Like we practice being in the observer in this room. Uh, we do practice being. Like Buddha said that there's only one, uh, to be free of the, the trap of reincarnation and the suffering of old age, suffering and death of the human condition. Yeah, uh, there's only one place to escape that, that's enlightenment. So what does that mean? When you're in the observer, you're observing the limited self. Yeah, you're witnessing the story of the, uh, the ego I and the body, and you're, and you're witnessing the world uh, as a, from a place of the infinite, as opposed to be identified with the limited sense of self. So when you're in the limited sense of self, it's like, how could you steal my biscuits? You know, it's a, it's a limited to a limited relationship or a dualistic relationship. But when you're in the witnesser, whatever happens in this world, is you're, you're, you're witnessing it from the infinite. So then you're beyond, even if the body falls over, you're not the body. You're the witnesser of the body. So, uh, so you have that thing. So those, um, and I'll just close quick, very, very quickly. Like... Um, Hawkins said uh, he went in for a hernia operation and had it without anesthetic and he had excruciating pain um, uh, during the operation. And he had a flashback. And the Course in Miracles talks about guilt, you know, holding on to guilt. He had a flashback to a time when he was in the war and, uh, and he had just speared uh, an enemy, so enemy soldier in the groin, you know, and he left them to die without finishing them off. And he had the guilt that he should have had the soldier's code of finishing them off, and he didn't. And so that guilt 
we have one of the things for one of the, there's many laws of karma. One of them is like karmic undoing. What you've done unto others, you get to experience yourself, so that you can undo that karma and release the guilt. So in this lifetime, he had this operation without anaesthetic, and he had excruciating pain. Then he had a flashback. And he remembered the guilt he had of not finishing off that soldier when he stabbed them in the groin. So, so it's like in this lifetime we see, well, that's unfair. Am I being punished with this unfair pain in this operation? But actually, you know, actually on a deeper level, one is paying off, uh, is paying off these things. There are things with abandonment, thing, various things that may happen. But um, also there's re guilt, repressed feelings, the meaning. As you release the feelings, go to the observer, pray for a miracle, you're deleting the karma and so you undo. Like, I always try and make any, everything meaningless because I'm also deleting that, I'm also deleting the karmic program that will make it go over and over again. Like, uh, you know, people can bring cakes and donuts in here, I've rendered them meaningless, so I don't notice them. When, I, when they were meaningful for me, if there was a donut in, the, in this room, I would just remember the donut from the whole meeting. I wouldn't remember anything else because it was meaningful. So, so that's the thing. That's my karma is that I've made donuts special, and I suffered donuts because they were so special to me. As soon as I re re rendered the meaningless, it's like I can have a donut on the table, forget it's there, and that's how you can undo things.